This video is a little bit of an experiment for me. This is a case study of one of my client's projects who built a Quonset Hut house in rural Texas. We're going to look at the design first and then go step-by-step step through the whole construction process in photos and video that the client sent me all along the way. First, let me set this up with a little bit of backstory. So around April of 2022, this couple approached me about working with them on plans for their build. They sent me a PDF from the manufacturer of the Quonset Hub building they had already bought. They sent me a floor plan that they had found online, which just did not work with the building that they had bought. And it's fair. I mean, people don't know, but there's ways of working with a Quonset Hut that are better than others. And trying to just make this floor plan work with this building just was not happening. Uh, I, initially, I really wanted to just run the other way. But I met with them on Zoom and we talked it through and they were just absolutely lovely people. They totally won me over. I really wanted to work with them at that point. And we just started from scratch and developed a simple floor plan that worked really well to meet their needs and went really well with the building they had bought. And they built it and it turned out great. The video that follows is an edited version of a live session I did in my online membership community called the Quorum, the Quonset Forum. If you're interested in learning more about building a Quonset Hut house, check out the Quorum at the link in the description below. If you like this video and you want to see me do more case studies of client projects or have other suggestions for me here on the channel, let me know in the comments. I'd love to get your questions and feedback. Enjoy the video. I want to say they moved in at the, about the beginning of this year. I'm going to just show you a couple of things about the design first, and then we will get into imagery of the actual construction. Here's my 3D model. Basically what had happened was this client came to me where they had already bought the building, which is really about, I would say about 50-50 when people come to me and they've already bought their building, whether what they want to do with the building will actually work with what they bought. The reason that it comes up in this context and it was so irritating to me was they sold these two little side windows to this client, but the, the windows were too high off the ground, A, to meet the building code, but B, for basic safety if you're trying to get the point of the windows in a bedroom is to get out in case of a fire and the windows were too low and too small and they just wouldn't there was nothing about these side windows that was going to work and i had a, a design that was pretty adaptable to what this guy wanted and we were able to just we just kind of threw out his floor plan and adapted the design i had already come up with and made it work for him and it, it's a great it's a great house and you'll see from the from the images so let's keep moving here uh, he wanted a deep set porch on this side and uh, deep porches on both sides, two bedrooms downstairs and a master suite up above. All right, there. Now you can start to see, okay, so we have, we have two bedrooms downstairs, suite upstairs with the um, sink area, the toilet and shower uh, at the windows, to the window side there. Big closets upstairs, nice loft space over the kitchen downstairs. And they requested the giant patio door. And you know, some people want a window with the sink at the window. Some people want an island with a bar top, like a breakfast bar, that's very popular. But she wanted a big island and so this was their kitchen layout, big patio door to be able to just go directly out to their big porch, big giant island for canning and prep and baking and lots of stuff like that. I'm just glancing at the chat. So after my rant about the salespeople, someone tried to sell me a weirdly sized set at a discount. Yeah, I mean, they'll do anything. And yeah, sales guy at my vendor said Galvalum coating provided insulation. I, this, I just, I, this just makes me crazy. There is no magic coating on the Galvalume that provides insulation. Say it with me, there is no magic coating on the Galvalume that provides insulation. That is the worst crock of garbage ever. And the manufacturer's insulation is not really very good at all. Uh, and there's lots of reasons why, like scientific, actual technical reasons why their insulation is not good. I mean, if you're building a garage or an ag building or something and you want some insulation in it and it's not for a residence, that's eh, probably okay. But totally not residential grade and it will probably lead to condensation more likely than not if you use the manufacturer's insulation. Let's go straight to some images now because they built this thing and they did a nice job with it. Client sent me this when they're pouring the concrete. 
one thing I do want to point out about the concrete here. Okay, pausing it right there. So remember they have these really deep porches on this build. And here's the line going to be the line where the end wall is going to go. And then they've they're basically forming it up to that line. And then they're going to come back and add, you know, this rear part. And the reason is that you really want your exterior concrete to slope away from the end wall. You do not want to pour a giant flat slab and then set your end wall in because you have to slope that exterior concrete to drain away from the building. You really don't want it flat right up to that end wall. Concrete really, in any kind of an exterior, needs to slope to drain, have some sloping to drain. On the side, you can see the side, they set their arch up one foot on a curb. You could call it a stem wall, but it's not very high. So the arch is gonna sit up here and that's level all the way through. And then the interior slab is flat. You do want your interior slab flat. Now, another thing here, you can see this kind of funny spot in the slab um, where, my, where my mouse is. That is where there's gonna be a shower and they wanna finish their tile flush with the concrete floor inside. So you block out an area when you pour the slab and the, set the shower drain down. That allows them to come in and with mortar later, make a sloping uh, floor with the mortar bed and then set the tile and work all that out so the tile comes out flush. They wanted a flush transition from the concrete floor in the bathroom. See, this big pipe is gonna be your toilet line. They'll cut that off and set the toilet there. And then this is the vent. And then here's the shower. And then that will be the shower drain. And all of this has been laid out. You know, when I draw a building, you know, for construction, I draw a slab plan and it shows them all the dimensions to these pipes so they can, when they can set up their formwork, they know. So, like in that previous video, all right, I'll pause it and point it out. Like, here's where that shower is. They, they've taken my, drawing and dimension, they've gone off of my dimensions and located all these pipes based on the forms on the outside of the form on the wall so they can locate the pipes in the correct place so that when they come and put the framing later the walls are going to go all on the right spot all right so they're you know my plans showed all of that that's how i draw my plans for construction so here they are when the slab is poured again you can see that shower recess spot there that's going to be the bathroom now they've started putting arches. So here you can see, you know, the base plate is going all the way along the, the wall. And then you can see there, you know, there's their line where it's going to be inside versus outside. They set up a lot of scaffolding here. The first couple of arches are a little tricky because, um, you know, that you got no support. You need the scaffolding. You need something to support your initial few arches. And then once you have like three arches, it's solid enough that you can just go forward without without having to support them all the way along. Pretty common that you see they set the side walls along and then set the arch um, segment by segment, you know, on top of that. You know, these V-shaped boards are adding some additional support up there as they go. John is asking in the chat, how many arches does it typically take to gain stability? Yeah, I mean, once you have three arches, yeah, they say keep them loose. I mean, you pretty much want to keep them loose all the way all the way down the line until the whole building is together. But once you have three arches, the first one is is pretty noodly and it needs some support, and the second one is still a little floppy. But the, by the time you have three arches, they're hanging together pretty well. You can move forward without really much fear at that point. So I would say, John, the answer is three. But you really want to get the whole building up before you go back and start tightening. It's tedious and there's parts of construction that are tedious and that's just how it is. So they're pretty much just going panel by panel up through. They didn't try and have some elaborate mechanism for hoisting whole arches into place or anything like that. 
here we have the, you know, I mean, the archers went together. Look how even and nice, you know, they got it. They did a really good job putting this together. I hope you're enjoying the video. This case study and how you can build a really awesome house with a Quonset hut is brought to you by the Quorum, the Quonset Forum, my online membership community. If you're serious about building a Quonset hut house or want to learn more about how they work, check out the Quorum. Inside is my free course, Quonset Nuts and Bolts, which really gives you a good overview of Quonset huts, how they work, and how you go about turning them into an awesome house. Sign up and get two weeks free. Check it out at the link below. If you like this video and you want to see more case studies of client work that I've done, let me know in the comments. Thanks. I love it when clients send me this stuff and it's like often they don't. So, But you can see it's starting to take shape. You know, here we're a little further along. Zip system sheathing, if you don't haven't heard of it or don't know, it's a great product. It's sort of the exterior sheathing um, combined with the waterproofing, like the house wrap that you would typically use. All my architect friends and I love this stuff. It's just really good. It's a good quality product. And they make the sheathing board where there's insulation built into it. So the zip sheathing with insulation, it's like a structural panel exterior sheathing, waterproofing layer, and insulation. Not all their products have the insulation built in. They make different ones. They make different thicknesses of insulation, but the zip system is a really good system. Again, sign of a good builder that they've got the zip system going on the building. So we have some of these of the framing. I, I don't know, I love looking at framing. It's exciting to me. So here's where, at that, at that exterior, this would have been a window and just on the fly with their builder, because they had this really good builder, they framed this for a door and they built a big deck off of the master suite upstairs there. It wasn't even on the plans, they just kind of went for it. So they put this wood, they put these wood panels on the ceiling, which they ended up caulking and smoothing it all out. And they ended up painting it in the end. I sort of hoped it would be like, oh, I have all this beautiful wood. But, you know, they weren't super careful with the screws and things. And I think they just thin wood for an easy um, ceiling. And then they smooth finished it and painted it out. The one window ended up at the stair at the stairwell, and the other one ended up in the bathroom. That made some nice, a couple of nice interior spaces. You can see there where the window landed at the stair landing. That turned out pretty nice. Here you can see how they built that large deck off of the exterior on the back, and how nice that came out. Here we have a few interior just photos. And these are all just snapshots from the client. I want to get this professionally photographed. Uh, they had a utility room. They put some nice cabinets in there. And this was the bathroom that ended up having the window in it. But I mean, imagine this window is for emergency egress and a fire. I mean, come on. That's ridiculous. All right. End of rant. Okay, but then we have a couple more. So, yeah, came out pretty good. Sort of storage in general seems like a problem. Well, I mean, there's a big utility room downstairs that doubles as kind of a pantry space. There's a lot of storage in the kitchen. Uh, upstairs, there's two giant closets. The one in that last video, uh, I think she had actually moved a desk in there and made a little desk space off the bedroom. But there's two huge closets upstairs as part of the master suite. And then the bedrooms downstairs both have pretty big closets. And there's a coat closet under the stairs, as well as the utility room slash pantry storage and a big wall of cabinets in the kitchen. 
here you can see it inside there. There's a whole giant wall of full height pantry storage in the kitchen. So I think this house actually has a fair amount of storage, but you know, I guess, I mean, it depends on how much a person really feels like they need. Beautiful moonlit shot of the exterior at night. So I didn't mention it and I know I'll be asked, so I'll say this building was built using uh, model S3418 model Quonset. And I've done this design also for a Q3517 model Quonset Hut building. And that, that video exists and here's the link to that uh, video if you wanna see that. Now that video is just a silent walkthrough in my computer software. It's not a built building and there's no narration and there's no sound. It was just an experimental video. I put it out on the channel like a year ago and it's gotten 64,000 views, I couldn't believe it. So anyway, that video exists. If you wanna compare this design to a Q model with basically the same layout, check that one out. Let me know what content you want me to make for the channel. I'm really putting effort into making better videos and doing better content. For your Quonset Hut build, let me know what you need to know. Let me know what you want to see. Leave me the comments, and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.